Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great, following the three H's of the channel and all that good stuff. And in this video, it's all about the state of Ohio. So, if that sounds like something you're interested in, definitely pull up a stump with me and let's get into it. Thank you for watching. This is a story that my parents told me from back when they were just dating, probably 1991 or so, I believe. They decided that they wanted to go out on a night drive one night. For those of you who don't know and don't live in Ohio, night driving is something that a lot of us do for fun when we don't really have anything else going on, especially back before smartphones and good internet. Some people might find it boring, but when you live in the great corn plains, you learn to make your own fun. They were driving to a place called Gore Orphanage, and long story short, Gore Orphanage is one of the spookiest places or areas here. Supposedly, the head lady working there randomly snapped and burned the place down after locking all the children in their rooms. Ever since then, the place is just bad juju, and it's pretty much to be avoided at night. So my dad, being the tough city guy he was, decides to turn the lights off and park right where the orphanage used to be. It's a very quiet night. They sit there. Nothing happens for a while. My dad has to go to the bathroom, so he steps outside to do his business. He walks a few feet into one of the two million cornfields. He hears something pushing corn aside and running toward him at very high speed. Dad panics a bit and runs back to his firebird. His belt is undone, so his pants are falling down the whole way. Mom is screaming, asking what's going on. Dad peels out of there and doesn't stop driving until they reach the safety of the city lights again. He goes to drop my mom off at who would become my grandma's house. And while she gets out of the car, she says, um, you should look at this. My dad gets out of the car. There are black footprints all over the top of the car. They are black like soot. They're the size of children's feet. He learned his lesson and never went back there again. There's this really creepy road near where I live in Ohio. Its local name is Trail Bottom Road, but I think on maps it's just a number that's associated with it. Either way, it's a long stretch through deep woods that connects two small towns together through a back way. I was a paper delivery driver, and I would take my wife and son, who was just small at the time, with me. Sometimes it worked out because she would put the papers in the boxes while I drove, this first night of doing this was fine, but the second night, it got a little spooky. So she had taken a paper from the pile, and she was just putting it in the box. And then she screamed, rolled up her window, the paper dropped on the dirt. I drove off like a bat out of hell, asking her what happened. She says that something tried to reach out and grab her from the darkness. We had three more papers to deliver on that route. I did the rest on foot near the boxes. But the worst time was one time that I was driving to put my son to sleep with my wife. She was also in the passenger seat again. We were driving down this road, the road that we knew well. The night was clear. All the roads were clear. We were driving into this local town and turning around when suddenly something happened. It started with this flashing red light. It was supposed to be just a warning light for high water ahead, but for some reason, I started freaking out. I was getting flashes of what I now know was a repressed memory of an attempted abduction of me when I was just a kid. I had no idea I had this memory, but for some reason, the red light just brought it back but that's not the worst thing that happened that night i was trying to calm down you know that feeling 
like when you're crying and you've cried all the tears you can and there's no more so you're just sitting there kind of quiet so my wife is patting me on the back we decide that the best thing to do is just drive back home and then we can discuss what's going on there as we drive i'm explaining some details that are coming back to me basically it was an alien encounter memory something that was repressed for maybe 20, 30 years. And then, something comes running across the road. My headlights illuminated it perfectly. It looked to be a canine, a giant canine, but it had a human face. The face looked wrong, all melty, like in the remake of The Thing. I couldn't stop in time. I ran it over. I drove back into town. All of us were quiet. My son slept through the whole thing. I checked the front end because the bang it made after hitting my front end was horrible. But there was no blood. There was no fur. No flesh anywhere. I have no idea what that was or why that red light that I've seen so many times before brought back a repressed memory of an attempted alien abduction. I don't know if they're related, but it was one of the weirdest and worst nights of my entire life. I'm sorry it's so disjointed. I'm just trying to get the details straight. So this is one of the weirder things that has happened to me. I live in Ohio and I used to work for an Iroquois Indian man. He told me about some Indian word that I can't remember. Basically, they're creatures that hide in the forests. They mimic human sounds, or the sounds of animals, to lure animals into the woods. He told me this when we were trapping together and heard a hurt deer. He said that whatever this was, was bad, that we were on its land and was trying to trick us and we had better give him a gift so he could leave us alone. So after we cleared our traps, we ignored the deer sound, got what we came for, and then we tossed a few animal heads and guts into the woods as a gift. As soon as we tossed them, the deer sound stopped immediately. The old man told me that the being, again, I can't remember the word he used, was happy, but we shouldn't hunt there anymore. He also told me that they can't cross moving water, but I've heard other stories to the contrary, so I don't really know about that one. I don't know if that creature is what you'd call a skinwalker or anything, but it definitely mimicked a deer perfectly, and if I were to go out there alone, I probably would have died. He was smart enough to remember that we didn't set any traps in that area, and also smart enough to know that the deer wouldn't be out this time, messing with the bait that we set out. Other times that I've been trapping, I heard kids screaming, and I've heard a woman begging for help. And every time, when I toss the guts into the woods, it all stops. Sometimes I still think about that if I was alone that day, what would have happened to me, what I would have seen, I probably would have never come back. This was an account from 1955 in August that I found written in an article on Mysterious Universe by Brent Swanser. Link in the description. On August 21st, 1955, a Miss Darwin Johnson and her friend, Miss Chris Lamble, were reportedly swimming in the Ohio River near Evansville, Indiana. It was a very clear and calm summer's day, and they were swimming out there, just having a relaxing day. And then something bizarre happened. Purportedly, Johnson suddenly had difficulty swimming and began thrashing about in a panic. It was as if something was intentionally and inexorably pulling her down. Lamble looked on in horror as her friend clutched at the water and gasped for air. The woman was able to break free from whatever was 
trying to pull her under the water, and as she began to swim away, she was pulled down again by the same thing, which was later described as a scaly, clawed hand. Lample furiously splashed her way across the water in her inner tube in an effort to reach her terrified, drowning friend, and as she approached, the mysterious assailant released its grip and sank away into the murky depths of the water. Once they got back to the shore, Johnson showed that she had deep gashes and bruises all over her leg, consistent with powerful claws, as well as this green palm print of a massive hand that seemed to be etched upon her flesh. She tried to wash it off, but it wouldn't go away for several days. While neither of the women had gotten a good look at the vicious mystery beast, they both seemed to agree that it had been a very large, fish-like humanoid of some sort. And things weren't done there. Investigator Terry Calvin interviewed the women years later and found out that soon after the incident, a mysterious person showed up who would only identify himself as an Air Force colonel. He questioned them and then advised them against telling anyone else about what happened. So obviously, a couple questions are, what was it that tried to drag her down? And who was that colonel who was trying to get them to remain quiet? No one seems to know. I'm in my 20s now, but about 10 years ago, something crazy happened. And nobody seems to believe me, and I don't really know where else to go with it, so bear with me. So as I said, this was ten years ago. I was just a kid then. My whole family is really smart, despite being quite poor. We live in this trailer park, and behind said trailer park, there's a creek that everyone goes and swims in, or fishes. So one day, in the middle of an Ohio summer, I was doing my normal routine when I hear a noise that's far off in the woods. Something to bring up is that I was at the creek by myself for the first time on my own. I wasn't exactly an easily scared kid at all. It's just that this day happened to be the day that nobody else wanted to go. So I was there by myself. For a few minutes, I was screeching back at the animal. But after a little bit, I decide to leave whatever it is alone and stop antagonizing it. I continue walking down the creek alone when I hear the noise closer and more clearly behind me. The sound this time was a little weird because it sounded like fingers popping or cracking knuckles. I look over and I see a forest that's very normal. But there's also this weird-ass pale snake this isn't super odd because snakes obviously exist and this is just an albino thing. So it's cool. I'm like, wow, I saw an albino snake. So I leave the snake alone after trying to pet it as the kind of kid I was. I figured that I'll just leave it be and decide to go back to the area that everybody goes to swim at. About an hour passes before I get back there. To give you a picture in your mind, there are basically two walls on either side of this creek, one of which is a concrete one, one of which is a dirt one. Over the concrete one is the trailer park, and over the dirt is a massive forest. So I hear this noise again, and I see something awful. It looked so alien and out of its environment. It was like a pale pink kind of color. It clearly walked on four legs, but the back two bent at odd angles and were more muscular than the front two. The front two were very thin and spindly, while the back two had muscle mass similar to a person's. Its head came up from its torso and had a bend in it as if it was like a snake that was about to strike at somebody. But I couldn't see any discernible eyes or mouth or really anything. It just looked so out of the ordinary, so alien to me, like I said. I stand there in total shock. The whole thing may have lasted about 30 seconds, 
but it felt like an hour. At the end of it, I blinked and rubbed my eyes to try and do a double take, but it was gone. Poof, as if it was never there. But two hours later, it starts to get dark. I climb out of the creek and put my shirt on, and just as I'm putting it over my head, I see it again. It's only feet away from me. It stands up to its full height, and I don't even know how tall it was. I just turn and bolt. As I climb the wall faster than I ever have before, I get up on top of it, and this thing is basically at eye level with me. I turn around and run away again, and then the creepiest thing happens. It's like it spoke into my head. It said, why are you running? We just want to bring you home. Every now and then, I've continued to see this thing at the edge of the forest, or sometimes I hear it calling out. I don't know what it is, but I don't want any part of whatever it has planned. So I live in Ohio, kind of near the West Virginia border. It's a forested area, there's lots of rednecks. The whole area, including my house, could be classified as just a little bit run down, but it's nice inside, and that's where I mostly stay. I play a lot of video games. I'm not a big outdoorsy person, so as you can imagine, most of my family are also rednecks, with the exception of my two aunts. My two aunts are pretty cool. They also have a house, pretty much in the woods like mine. But theirs is much more taken care of. Nice gardens, a small orchard, etc. They also like video games, and they aren't obnoxious like some of my other family members, so I go over to their place quite a bit. Aunt A is a biologist. She's an amazing cook, and she kicks my ass at Smash Bros. She's into all kinds of pagan and occult stuff, but she's pretty private and quiet about it, so nobody really bothers her about it. Aunt B is a programmer and tech support. She built me my first gaming computer for my birthday one year. She doesn't seem really that into the occult stuff herself. And my aunt's house isn't super far from mine. You can either go on the road in a loop and it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to drive. Or there's a path through the woods directly to there, which takes about 5 minutes tops. So with all of that out of the way, a couple years ago, I started hearing some weird noises from those woods at night. I used to write it off as animals in their mating season, or fighting. Aunt A starts getting a little weirded out by this. She tells me to come to their house on the road, not through the woods. I ask her why a few times, and she just looks at me and says, it's just not safe. Being an overconfident teenager, I keep going through the woods anyways because I believe I'm invincible at the time. One evening, I hear a really weird noise, really close to me, when I'm about halfway home from their house. It sounds like hyena laughter crossed with owl hoots. This was really creepy to me, it sent a shiver up my spine, so I'm kind of on edge the rest of the way home. And when I get to just about my back porch, I see something that still weirds me out, even now. I see this vaguely humanoid silhouette off in the distance, and it just kind of slinks back into the trees. The sun was just going down, so I couldn't see it too clearly. This, again, really made me nervous, just the way it slinked back into the trees so I told my dad about it. Dad is a bit of a borderline redneck, whose answer to things like this is, use more gun, quotes. So he offers to get me a gun to bring, just in case it's a rabid animal or something. He didn't really believe me about the humanoid part. His explanation was that, oh, it was just an animal, you know, it was dark, you just couldn't see it right. I try to believe him, I tell him that I would feel safer with a gun of my own. I tell Aunt A what I saw and I heard the next time I'm at their place. She gets quite upset about this 
and says she doesn't want me coming through the woods at all anymore. But Aunt B thinks that I'd be fine with a gun. Aunt A keeps nagging, and winter rolls around. It's cold as hell, so I just eat the gas costs, and I just drive there when I want to go see them. Occasionally, sometimes at night, you can hear sounds off in the woods, but nothing eventful happens all winter. But then the weather starts to warm up, and I decide to start walking again. Nothing really happens for quite a while. I hear weird noises every now and then. Sometimes I see things out of the corner of my eye that aren't there when I go to look at them. Or, in certain spots, I get a really creepy sensation of being watched. I decided to write it off as being paranoid and just keep going through the woods anyways because gas is expensive these days. So I was going through the woods, headed home in mid-April. The sun's already gone down, but it's a cloudless night, so I can see pretty well. I hear the weird noises again, the hyena owl sound, and then I see something move in front of me. I get my gun out. I warn whoever or whatever it is, in case it's someone trying to play a prank, which is wishful thinking on my part. It lets out this unearthly howl. It felt like it pierced through my body to the very bone, and it steps out from behind a tree. It's easily very tall. If I had to guess, I'd say eight feet easily, and it was terrifying looking. It was this pale, emaciated looking thing. I didn't even think to shoot it. I just turned around and started running as fast as I could back to my aunt's house. The whole time, I hear footsteps behind me and the hyena owl laughter. I run faster, screaming for my aunts. I finally make it into my aunt's yard, right where her first apple trees are. And the thing abruptly stops and lets out this shriek and then backs up into the woods, circling around. Aunt A comes running out and rushes me inside. She tells me to go upstairs with Aunt B, who's absolutely freaking out from all the noises. I do as she says, as I'm not going to argue at this point. I get upstairs with Aunt B. We lock ourselves in the bedroom try to calm down, trying to catch our breath. We hear the door downstairs open. We rush over to the window to see Aunt A going out into the backyard. The thing comes bounding out of the woods again, stopping right in front of where her apple trees are. It's like it can't go past them. Aunt A just stares the thing down. She's saying something, but it's too low and we're too far away. I can't make it out. Aunt B and I have no idea what the hell she's doing, but Aunt B is freaking out, thinking that this thing is going to hurt her, or worse. Aunt A just keeps staring at it. The thing paces, but never steps onto her property. It won't go near her apple trees or her garden. Aunt A yells something at it. The thing does that weird hyena owl laugh again and bounds off back into the woods. Aunt A comes back into the house. Aunt B just about knocks her over, both of us going, what the hell was that? What the hell? Aunt A just sits down, pours herself a drink, tired looking, and says, calm down, it's gone now. Aunt A calls Dad to let him know that I'll be staying with them tonight, then calls the police and tells them that there is a very aggressive animal in the area. She won't answer any of our questions, just keeps saying, it's gone, don't give it energy, it's just an animal. The next morning, she drives me home. Fast forward a month from then, and I still had no idea what the hell that thing was, or why my aunt wouldn't tell me jack shit about it. Hopefully, someday, she'll tell me what it is, because she seemed to know quite well. So, did you have one that you liked the most? 
let me know which one down in the comments. Do you have one of your own? I have an email in the description below. Also down there is a PayPal and a Patreon if you would like to support the channel that way. And one thing I learned about Ohio is that there's apparently a lot of weird stuff that goes on there. The one from the 50s about the girl being grabbed by whatever. That's also a genuine fear of mine. That's also why I like to go swimming in pools instead of the river. Nothing against the river, just uh, don't want to get got by a creature. And then, 20 years later, I end up on TV or another YouTube video or something. Everyone talking about my disappearance, like, he just went swimming one day and never came back. What happened to the leaf? But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and me rambling at the end. But yeah, if you did, then be sure to like and subscribe, tick that notification bell, and all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for pulling up a stump with me, and thank you for watching. Have a good week.